So, in this presentation, I will discuss a new way to generate a pulse train with a high repetition rate made of picosecond pulses. Here, what we will use, it will be a triangular shaping of the spectral phase. So, this work has been achieved at the University of Burgundy, at the Laboratoire Interdisciplinaire Carnot de Bourgogne, in Dijon, so in France, by Hugo Andral, who was a postdoc at that time, and by myself, Christophe Finot. I also want to thank my co-workers, Ju Julien Fatomes and Bertrand Kibler, as well as Anastasia Chevaleva, who uh, now does an internship on this subject. So my presentation will be organized as follows. I will first introduce the different ways to produce high repetition rate uh, per strain, and then I will describe our approach and what is the difference between uh, with the previously known approach. I will show then the experimental setup that we have used as well as different results that we have obtained. I will uh, then discuss how it is possible to use this scheme to process several channels simultaneously and before conclusion I will also show some, show some results where we have used a dual tone phase modulation as a starting point. So there are different ways to generate high repetition rate optical bus train. Here we target repetition rate of a few tens of gigahertz and we can use amplitude modulators, we can use activity modlock uh, lasers or we can take advantage of the care non linearity in optical fiber using serotonin compression, multiple four wave mixing or C-phase modulation followed by a dispersive element. Another approach does not rely on non-linearity, it relies on phase modulation in the temporal domain, typically a sinusoidal phase modulation that is followed by a dispersive element. So all those methods have some advantages and some drawbacks, and if we try to compare them in terms of cost, juicy cycle, extinction ratio, side lobes or noise, what we can see, this is that there is no perfect method. There are some that are very efficient but costly, and there are some of uh, those methods, such so as the one based on sinusoidal phase modulation, that is not costly, that can provide low duty cycle, low noise, but the result is impaired by a, a strong uh, uh, side lobes or a poor extinction ratio. So in this presentation, we will be mainly interested in this last method and we will try to get rid of those two strong drawbacks uh, which are the poor extension ratio or the presence of strong side gaps. So I recall here more precisely what is this method. So with this method we start from a continuous wave uh, in the frequency domain, this is a single component uh, as a carrier frequency, and then we modulate this uh, continuous wave using, in the temporal domain, a sinusoidal wave. The sinusoidal wave, its frequency will give uh, the period and the repetition rate of the first frame that we target, and in the frequency domain, uh, it leads to the emergence of uh, different sidebands that are spaced by the repetition rate and we can find the amplitude of those different sidebands using uh, Jacobi Unger expansion and what uh, we can see this is that the amplitude of the sideband is proportional to a Bessel function of uh, the first spaces of order n. So, for the moment, in the intensity profile, we have nothing, we just have a phase modulation in the temporal profile, and to convert this uh, phase modulation into amplitude modulation, we use a dispersive element that can be a passive fiber, diffraction gratings, fiber bra gratings, and with this dispersive element, it will uh, apply a quadratic spectral phase modulation 
and with this it will convert the initial phase modulation into a temporal modulation of the intensity profile. So this method works quite well. Here is an example uh, of uh, some experimental results that have been obtained at a high repetition rate. But the problem this is that the spectral phase is not perfectly cancelled and it leads to strong background and side lobes as we can see in this experimental uh, measurement. So our idea here is to propose a change in this method to uh, to improve the result and here we want to use a simple scheme because there are already some schemes that have been implemented such as a scheme based on a non linear loop mirror or based on a non linear uh, Mamichev regenerator. They are efficient, but you need to add an amplifier, a highly non linear fiber, and a filter. So, quite a lot of work to get rid of uh, this uh, background. So, our method it is based on uh, the Jacober, uh, Jacobi Younger expansion and what we can note in this uh, expansion this is that between two successive components there is a phase shift in the spectral domain of pi over 2. So the spectral phase is not uh, parabolic, is not quadratic, the spectral phase is triangular that means that if you just use a quadratic spectral phase, you can just partly cancel uh, the spectral phase. Now, if you are able to generate exactly the opposite of the triangular spectral phase, what you will obtain, this is a spectral phase that is perfectly cancelled, so you will obtain very nice pearl shape in the temporal domain. And this is what we are trying to do. We uh, have here an example for an initial amplitude of the phase modulation that is around one radians. And we see that when we cancel perfectly as the spectral phase by using a triangular uh, spectral profile or a profile made of pi over two phase shift, what we obtain this is a very uh, nice pulse with an excellent extinction ratio as we can see here when we plot the result on a log scale. So uh, structures that are fully limited structures and if we compare this to the result that we have using a parabolic uh, spectral phase we can see that we have really improved the quality of the pulse. We have removed the side blobs and we have a, a much higher extinction ratio. So here we have a very strong uh, improvement. We just have to choose carefully the level of the initial uh, phase modulations uh, because this very nice result are just obtained for a narrow band uh, here typically a modulation around 1.1 radians. In all cases we have an improvement in terms of peak power and in terms of extinction ratio and the optimum result are for 1.1 radians and we are currently developing an, an, an analytical background to uh, prove it it more uh, rigorously. So now let me uh, describe the experiment uh, that we have done. We start from a continuous wave. We use a phase modulator uh, driven by a sinusoidal wave at different repetition rate from 10 up to 40 gigahertz. For result at 40 gigahertz we use an RF amplifier. Then we use a spectral shaper and at the output we use an optical sampling oscilloscope and a high resolution optical spectrum to control the output pulse strain. And what you see here, this is the result obtained at 10 GHz. This is 
that what we can predict numerically or analytically is perfectly reproduced experimentally and our experimental results are fully in line with the theoretical expectation. We have very nice pearl shape for an amplitude of modulation around 1.1 radians. We can also test other amplitude of modulation of the, fa of the initial uh, phase and what may look a bit strange this is that in this process the temporal waveform that we obtained can be modeled by Akhmedyev breathers. This is very strange because the Akhmedyev breathers they are nonlinear structure that you can find in optical fiber when nonlinearity is taken into account. Here uh, there is no nonlinearity in our process, but the typical waveform that we obtain are very similar to the Akhmedyev breather in the temporal domain and, and so uh, uh, regarding the spectral domain. So here we only consider the shapes at the maximum of compression, both uh, for the shape that we generate as well as uh, the Akhmedyev breather. So here something that is a bit surprising. Uh, but anyway, in both cases, the bell shape are transform limited structures. So here are other results obtained at 20 gigahertz. And what we can see, this is that uh, the shape are uh, very nice. They are highly uh, stable. We have an excellent exception ratio that is higher than 20 dB. And the full wave at half maximum uh, that we have measured in terms of duration is around uh, 12 picoseconds. And here uh, we have make uh, we have used a Gaussian shape to fit to adjust the different profile both in the temporal and spectral domain and we see that we have a very good agreement uh, that suggests that the structure that we have are very close from a Gaussian pulses. And we can still increase the repetition rate. Here are results at obtained at uh, 30 uh, gigahertz. We still have very nice results that are closely uh, in line with the Gaussian fit. And at 40, we still achieve a very nice extinction ratio. And uh, we generate pulses that are uh, shorter than sand, uh, that 7 picoseconds. So it works very well experimentally. What we have also tested, this is uh, the possibility to process several wavelengths simultaneously. Indeed, our process is linear. So we should be able to process simultaneously several wavelengths to generate uh, four channels having each the same property uh, uh, and here using a single phase modulator and a single spectral shaper. So we have done it. Here are the results at 14 uh, gigahertz for four different channels that are equally spaced. And what we can see, this is that we are able to generate uh, pulses without any crystal between the channels, which will not be possible using uh, methods based on nonlinear process. There will be cross phase modulation between the channels. What we can see this is that with our device, we can also t interleave in the temporal domain the different pulse uh, stream. It's quite easy. We just have to add an additional delay on the different pulses, so very easy um, to be made. We have also test uh, the result at 40 gigahertz, and we have confirmed that uh, it works also very well at this repetition rate. We have no problem to generate four different uh, pulse, uh, pulse streams. The last thing that I would like to present this is uh, the use of a dual tone phase modulations. So in this case, what we have used, this is uh, instead of using a single phase modulation, we have used two phase modulation with 
uh, frequencies that are slightly different and with amplitude that can also be different. So when you add two sinusoidal modulation, what you create, uh, this is a beating if the two modulation have, do not have perfectly the same uh, frequency. So we observe uh, a beating uh, if the level of the two modulation is different this beating does the envelope of this beating does not go down to zero it goes down to zero if we have the same level on the two cases so our starting point here now is a beating and with our spectral uh, phase shaping we will convert this beating in the temporal domain and what we will obtain this is a modulation and the amplitude of the pulse train as well as a modulation of uh, their duration. So all the different pulses will have the same energy. They will just have a different duration and uh, so a different peak power. Uh, if the, uh, the second wave is quite low compared to the first wave, we will still maintain a shape that would be very similar. If the difference is more pronounced, then the, the shape may change significantly from one pulse to the other one. So we have also tried to test it experimentally. So we have involved here two different phase modulator and at the output, we perfectly checked the numerical uh, simulations. Uh, we can create a, a modulation of the intensity of the pulse train and of the duration of the pulse train with changes from one pulse to the other pulse. So it's now time to conclude. So to conclude, we have involved here a triangular spectral phase profile that is combined with a sinusoidal temporary phase modulation to provide an efficient solution to reach high repetition rate sources. Our theoretical and experimental uh, demonstration confirm that a very good extinction ratio can be obtained without any spurious side lobes. We have per shape that are very close from a uh, Fourier transform limited Gaussian pulse. And those pulse one are very sta uh, stable because we don't need to include uh, amplifier that will induce noise in the process and we don't have here any non-inarity. We, uh, this approach can fully uh, use uh, several channels and we can also benefit from a dual tone initial modulations. So we are currently working on more accurate analytical descriptions of all the properties of those pulses. And we have also seen that there are a few other interesting things that may happen for higher degree of uh, initial modulation. So we have decided to call this uh, shape the Bessellon wave. And finally, what I can say, this is that the process here, we have made everything at uh, 1550. So in the C band, the conventional bands of the optical communications, but everything can also be done as other wavelength, such as one microns or two microns, everything exists. So it's not a problem at all to reproduce those results at other wavelengths. So what I can say this is that you can find all the details in an article that has been uh, published in Optic Letters a few months ago. And we have also made available other contributions that you can find. Some of them are already published. Uh, some, uh, some of them uh, are under uh, submissions. So thank you for your attention.